I get the idea that the date's out there and they're in heated negotiations into the weekend as well. Let's take a representative U.S. family. How about the Rubio family down in Florida with four kids? And the only way they're communicating, because half their kids won't speak to them, is WeChat. Are you telling me Marco Rubio's not going to be able to talk to his family because Don, Donald Trump is going to take WeChat away? Tom, the first thing I thought when I saw the news cross the wire this morning was I need to get home and check my son's TikTok account and see if it still works because we're going to have a problem if it doesn't. Um, listen, I think, you know, this is uh, the, the news this morning is a hard line tactic by the administration to really put the pressure on China to agree to some sort of a deal here uh, ahead of this Sunday's deadline. We The reporting we had late last night was that Many of the people in the administration who were still had been opposed to the deal on national security grounds were starting to come, uh, starting to fold a little bit and, and believe as they got briefed that this Oracle agreement probably would work. It probably would, uh, it would cut that Gordian knot and find a way to uh, protect national security, even if Oracle, for instance, isn't the majority owner but has a pretty significant controlling stake in what, what happens from here on out. Bill, from what we understand this morning then, just to break down these two dates, it seems that as of Monday, what the United States would be doing is banning TikTok in the US from updating. And as of November 12th, if we can't clear up some of these issues, that when, that's when we start talking about a full shutdown of the app in the United States. Bill, when we're having this conversation, continually over the last couple of weeks, it's focused almost exclusively on the U.S. side, the administration, on whether they would or wouldn't accept a deal in its current form that Oracle is proposing. What's China saying? What are you hearing? Well, you know, China, China is, has its own interest in protecting its own company and its own uh, intellectual property in this case. And they're trying to, uh, they've been trying to find a deal that uh, gets to some of the U.S. concerns, but lets them, you know, continue to be able to monetize this, this program, this, this software, these apps that have been so hugely successful. Usually, usually the relationship has gone the other way. It's been the U.S. developed apps that, uh, you know, take over, take over the rest of the world. This is one of those few cases that the U.S. hasn't seen a lot of in the past where it's uh, something endogenous to China that has uh, become wildly popular. And if you have kids, you know how much time they spend on these things. No. Never. <laughs> Bill, I guess what we're finding out, though, in the last week is that ByteDance and China didn't want to sell this thing. And what we've found right. out in the last week, or at least the United States has found out, that the only kind of deal that they can get done is the one being proposed. Bill, can the two sides come together then based on that? Well, and, you know, the one thing we haven't talked about is the election and, and whether, you know, the U.S. government wants to be in the position of cutting 100 million users in the United States off of a service that uh, is, getting, is getting a pretty heavy workout these days. So uh, I think you're right. I think this is the agreement that they're, both sides are inching towards that, uh, China is not going to sell this outright. This is not going to become TikTok U.S. Uh, with uh, with no say uh, by ByteDance or uh, or the Chinese, you know, or the Chinese authorities that have been uh, helping negotiate this. So there's going to have to be a middle ground, and it's probably not going to end up with majority U.S. ownership. You know, Bill, John rightly said this is something that we need clarity on. Clarity has been lacking around this whole process. Bill, do we get any clarity with respect to this statement in terms of who has the upper hand in Trump's cabinet, the China hawks or the moderates? You know, the Steve Mnuchins on one side uh, and the Mark Meadows on the other side. Oh, I think, uh, I think ultimately this has been driven by the hawks. Uh, and you think and uh, and you see the people who we sometimes put in that category, you know, someone like Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who is, uh, as of last night, starting to dial back some of his opposition. Uh, you see you see the gradations in uh, hawkishness in the administration. But I think, you know, uh, from the beginning, uh, this raised concerns about whether the uh, whether the administration was just sort of picking and choosing things that were popular from China that it wanted to. Uh, take a political stand on, or whether this was really going to be a policy of, you know, we want clean networks, we want, uh, we want to make sure American business data doesn't well, end up in China. Bill, can I go back to first principles? Is there any evidence that WeChat is taking our data or using it in a devious national security way? No. And I think when you talk to, you know, to talk to the people who really dig into the code, they will say that. 
uh, Google uh, sucks up a lot more of your data and does, does put it to certain uses. I think the U.S. concern is there's enough potential that China does this that it's a problem. But I think, um, you know, when you look at the algorithms, you look at the way the software works, Google, Facebook, they're vacuuming much more from you.